everybody, my name is Mara Hosko, and I'm a machine learning specialist at AWS. Today, we're going to review Amazon SageMaker Studio, which is a single web-based interface for end-to-end -end machine learning development. With Amazon SageMaker Studio, you can run all your machine learning development steps, from preparing data, to building, training, deploying, and managing your machine learning models, all in one interface. We'll start with the left side of SageMaker Studio's homepage. You'll see you have your applications that you can launch. We have a wide variety of different IDEs to select from that are fully managed. You can have managed JupyterLab, as well as open source VS Code, Code Editor, and RStudio. You can also launch Amazon SageMaker Canvas, which is our low-code, no-code IDE. You'll see here you have different toolings that you can use for the machine learning lifecycle. You can prepare your data, you can use you can launch EMR clusters directly from SageMaker Studio interface if you want to do large-scale data processing. You can see which training jobs that you've run, either from a notebook, through a notebook job, or through Jumpstart. You can see which endpoints that you have running. You can also launch new endpoints or you can edit them for models that you already have existing. You can also have your experiments, your pipelines, and any CICD pipe. Uh, work with projects. We'll start with Jumpstart, which is our model hub. You can see we have a broad selection of different model providers with models that are optimized to run on AWS. If you click here into Hugging Face, you can mm, see there's over 300 different types of models, and you can filter by text generation, for instance, and then you can sort by most downloads. If I go here to Mistral 7B, I can see all of the different metadata associated with the model. I can click in, and within SageMaker Jumpstart, I can easily train the model on my own data set with no code required. I can deploy the model with one click, or I can evaluate the model on my own data set against things like toxicity, semantic robustness, and it will output a PDF report for me based on those parameters that I select. I can also open up a notebook and it can pre-made for either deployment or fine tuning and then immediately launch that in JupyterLab. If I go here to JupyterLab, if I want to start experimenting, I can see all of the JupyterLab spaces that I have running. I can see which ones are also shared in my domain so that I can collaborate with my teammates. If I want to start create a new JupyterLab space, I can either create a private space or I can share it with my domain, meaning my other teammates in my domain can see what work I'm doing and we can work with real-time collaboration. If I create a space, you'll see I have different options that I can choose to back JupyterLab. I can select which instance compute that I would like to back it by. For instance, I have fast launch compute, but I also have a, a large set of different instances to choose from. These go all the way up to some very large GPUs, this one having eight H100s. If I want to, for instance, start with a data prep and I only need to have a, a small instance type because I want to access EMR clusters, for instance, or glue, I can select this small instance type. I can run the space. Once I'm done with that, I can stop this space and then I can reselect a new different instance type. For instance, if I want to do interactive fine tuning on a notebook, I can select a very large GPU instance and I won't lose any data. So it'll persist as I start and stop the instance. We've also standardized on a single image type, in this case, the SageMaker distribution. So you'll have all your common frameworks like FXNet or PyTorch. However, you can also bring your own custom image. I can select the storage type that's needed and I can also select if I have a custom EFS access. For instance, some teams may have a shared EFS within their team where they have very large data sets. So if my admin has provided me access to this custom EFS, I can now access the shared EFS as can everybody in my domain or user profile that has access to it. I also can add a lifecycle configuration to cut further customize the environment. And if my admin has set it up, I have auto shutdown so that if this Jupyter Lab space is running for a set period of time, it'll automatically shut off after it's detected idle. If I go here and I open up a new Jupyter Lab space, 
you'll see here that I'll open it up in a new tab. And that there's a variety of different toolings that are added to this Jupyter Lab. If I want to change the kernel, I can select the kernel type and back it by the kernel of my choice. For instance, for instance, if I want to do serverless Spark processing, I can select Glue PySpark, and I'll have access to Glue Interactive Sessions for my compute. I also can easily connect to an EMR cluster. If I hit this cluster button, I can see I have an EMR cluster already launched. Maybe my admin has launched this for me. I can connect that, and now this notebook is notebook can easily connect to the EMR cluster and I can do my data processing. I also have the ability to launch notebook jobs for my notebook, meaning I can run the notebook at a set schedule. So maybe I want to run it every Monday morning because I get new data and I can run the analysis output graphs uh, every Monday morning without intervention. You'll see here in this notebook, I also have changed from this Python cell to a SQL cell. So if I go here to this icon, we now have the ability to connect to a variety of different data sources. So if I want to connect to Athena or Redshift or Snowflake, I can then browse the data schema, for instance, in Snowflake. I can select here and I can query a notebook. And now this table that I have access to, I can now change this from a Python to SQL and I can now do my SQL querying. I can also change it to Pandas data frame if I'd like. We have also have access to Code Whisper, which is Amazon's code companion. So I can have my cells auto-populate code suggestions. And then if I go here to this icon, this chatbot icon, I have access to our chatbot. So in this case, you have access to a variety of different models that you can select and just start chatting to. So you have providers like AI21, you have access to Anthropic, all the way down if you wanted to have your own endpoint as well. For instance, some of our customers have trained Code Llama on their own code repo. They can call that and start chatting to it. In this case, we set up Jupyter AI to be accessed to this model, which is a SQL coder, um, which essentially just takes text to SQL. So in this case, this chatbot, we ask, can you give me 10 airports from the data that's in, in Snowflake? and it will output a SQL query that I can just copy and paste into it. You can also do that directly in the notebook using AI, percent percent AI. So you'll see here, um, that's what we're doing in this case. If I go back, I can also launch Code Editor. So again, Code Editor being open source VS Code. If I open up Code Editor, directly, you'll see here that I have access to the open source VS Code. I have access to debugging with Code Editor VS Code. I also have access to the AWS Toolkit, as well as Code Whisper, which is our code companion. This is fully managed as well. You'll see here if I go to create a new code ed editor space or I want to adapt one, it's the exact same as JupyterLab. So I can select the instance type. In this case, I can't change it because my instance type is running. Uh, but if I were to stop this, the data would persist and I can easily change my instance type. You also have your images, your custom EFS, your license configurations, and your storage. So this is an overview of SageMaker Studio. You can see all the tooling that we have. There's a lot more to go into it, um, but hopefully this gives you an idea of all that's available within SageMaker Studio. Thank you.